we're here at Spacecom. Couldn't be more excited. The second time that I've been at this convention, and I'll tell you, it is so heavily attended. So many folks here right now. Lots of vendors, lots of excitement about space. We've got an interview with Rocket Factory Augsburg. Lots of fantastic information to bring to you. Lots of great content. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get to it. Good afternoon, folks. We are here at the Spacecom event in Farnborough. Second time I've been to this event and have some fantastic opportunities that I didn't get the last time. Really grateful for that. Thanks so much, Jonas, for being with us today. Could you inter introduce yourself rather to the viewers? Sure. Hi, I'm Jonas, uh, Jonas Kellner. I'm head of marketing, communications, and political affairs okay. at Rocket Factory Oxford. And um, yeah, we are here at uh, Spacecom UK to Get to know the industry in the UK as we are launching in August 24th from Saxophone Spaceport in Scotland. So, Jonas, everybody in Britain that at least knows about this is very excited about it. So, I mean, what do you, you know, generally when we're talking about the launch, the first launch of a prototype or a new rocket, it, it almost never goes right. So, I mean, how are you anticipating that this is going to go? And what are your plans for future launches as you ramp yourself up from being fully operational? Or do you anticipate that RFA1 is going to be successful from the first launch? What do you think? We are obviously aiming for a successful first test flight um, and we'll do everything that's necessary to increase the likelihood of it. Um, obviously, we cannot guarantee that it's going to be successful 100%, but um, yeah, we have extensive testing, um, we have a running engine, we have successfully um, tested our upper stage for full duration um, hot fire, which was 280 seconds. Um, hardware is coming together in, in Augsburg, and it's exciting to see that like everyone at RFA is aware, like, this is going to happen soon. So um, yeah, yeah we, are, we are confident uh, that uh, yeah, we'll reach orbit on the first test flight. And if not, um, like we'll still gather data, um, learn everything we can, and then do it better for the second test flight. Well, obviously, all of us are pulling for you. Have any customers decided to take this risk and 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 take the first ride with you? Yes. Uh, so no flight chance will be uh, let let go to waste. Uh, so on the first two test flights, we have customers on board. Um, the German Aerospace Center DLR booked uh, the first two test flights. They are also fully booked. Uh, so wow. On the first flight, we'll have uh, three customers on board, um, two satellites that get deployed, and uh, one customer who extends a boom with a camera on top, looking bad, uh, back at our Redshift OTV to snap a picture in orbit. Um, so yeah, we are excited to already, for the first test flight, have uh, commercial customers on board, which also is a proof of trust and confidence in our, in our vehicle and our team. Yeah, so so explain that to me. What what do you think has has uh, inspired these folks? Led them to believe that you will be successful right from the beginning. So these customers don't have to pay for it. Right. That's something that we have to be uh, honest about before uh, because Neil R pay for it. So yeah. we took part in this German aerospace competition, the, the micro launcher competition, yeah. and Neil R uh, paid eleven million euros and uh, decided to to book those two first test flights. So. Yeah, it's basically a win-win situation yeah. for, the, for the customers. Um, besides that, I think the, the offer, the, like the value proposition that we are proposing is quite good. Um, setting aside like the technology, uh, which is advanced uh, and um, like innovative, um, the service is quite good, right? We have 1.3 tons to a low Earth orbit. Um, we uh, yeah, have a third stage, which allows us uh, to navigate in orbit and deploy multiple customers in different orbits. So right. the flexibility um, that we can offer for a very competitive price is quite good. Can you tell me about that price point again? Because last time I talked to you guys, yeah. it was incredible. So, I mean, how much are you looking to charge per kilogram yeah. you know, compared to other 
competitors? Well, our main aim is basically to be competitive on a global scale, right? So if we look uh, at SpaceX, for example, who is offering ride shares uh, in the range of five to six thousand dollars per kilogram, um, that's what we're aiming for as well, while offering a better service in a sense, right? Because uh, yeah. Falcon 9 is a huge vehicle with multiple customers on board. So if you have the, the smaller vehicle uh, with less customers, but more customer oriented services, um, it's, a, it's a much better service for the same price, basically. Now, do you foresee also, there's an, there's an emphasis in Europe I've noticed in terms of trying to keep things green to minimize the carbon footprint that yeah. any launch presents. Obviously, if a customer has to transport their satellite and their staff across yeah. the Atlantic, that creates more of a footprint. Would you say that's part of the motivation? And are there other things that RFA is doing to try to improve your carbon footprint? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, that's something that we consider from the beginning on, uh, and it's incorporated in the design of the vehicle. A um, few examples, for example, we use a stage combustion engine, um, actually the only ones in Europe who uh, develop and, and operate this kind of engine, which is not only very uh, efficient with the fuel, but it's also more sustainable and environmentally friendly because we don't have this like in the open cycle uh, exhaust pipe, basically, but we take the gases after the turbine, right. run the, turbo, uh, the, the pumps and reroute it back into the main combustion chamber to burn it again. Um, so we don't have this very fuel-rich exhaust gases of the of the gas generator, and um, yeah, the the second thing is that we use stainless steel uh, for for our first and second stage, uh, which is not only very cheap but also very easy to work with, uh, and yeah. We'll also plan to reuse the first stage, uh, and what you reuse, you don't have to reproduce, right. so we can not even in the vehicle, but uh, already in the value chain, like in the production, um, save uh, resources by not having to reproduce new stages if we can reuse the old ones. That's exciting. It's actually the first time I've heard you guys mention reusability for the booster. Um, it, can you share with me at all as to how you're going to do that? Is it going to be an oceanic recovery or right. parachute or what? Right. So we plan to attach a parachute to it and guide it back um, automatically to then being picked up and uh, brought back to, to shore. Um, we don't plan to do this for the first launch, right, obviously, right. because there the only goal is to reach orbit. And um, but yeah, the, the design is already laid out in a sense that we can incorporate the usability as quickly as possible in the future launches. Fantastic. Um, in terms of because you mentioned that uh, the German Space Agency has invested a fair amount in this, right. are micro launchers a you know a popular idea in Germany right now? Is a lot being done to try to encourage homegrown launch providers in Germany? Um, I would say there's always more that uh, governments sure. can do. Um, may it be funding or may it be acting as an anchor customer and booking more launches. So the German Space Agency has now booked the first two test flights, but we would obviously be happy to, to provide further launches for, for the government. Um, otherwise, um, awareness is rising. Um, for example, Germany is also planning an uh, offshore spaceport, uh, which is called uh, GOSA, German Offshore Spaceport Alliance. So there's multiple things moving in Germany and uh, the politicians are also aware that Germany has to catch up and Europe as a whole has to catch up in regard to spaceflight um, because the US and other nation nations are like multiple years ahead. And um, yeah, it's, it's urgent that something happens in the industry in Europe as well. Very exciting. What sort of launch cadence do you anticipate out of Saxaboard? And how often are you going to make use of that spaceport? Yeah. So our plan is to uh, ramp up the cadence up to uh, 12 times a year, so wow. on a monthly basis. Um, for now, we have a multi-year agreement with Saxaboard, which allows us to have 10 launches per year, which is uh, over 30% of our their overall uh, capability. Yeah. They got a license for 30 launches a year. So that's a great start. Uh, and we'll see you from uh, to, to go from there because we'll not limit ourselves to, to launch only from Saxophone, right? Because that's perfectly suited for polar orbits, sure. But if you want to uh, offer equatorial um, orbits, then for example, Kourou and French Guiana is more suitable. So we'll have a combination of different uh, spaceports to offer our customers short log uh, logistics and also less bureaucracy mm -hmm. in this case. What led you to collaborate with Saxon? It's clear that you have a lot of confidence in yeah. them putting out a lot of launches out of there. What what was attractive about Saxon to you? Yeah. 
So Saxophone is also a private company, uh, as is RFA. So we have like it's, it was a match uh, in regard to this focus on cost efficiency, mm -hmm. but also the mentality of uh, like hands-on doing things quickly, but still reliably and with high quality. Um, also, uh, the Shetland Islands have a good basic infrastructure because we you have oil uh, industry there. You have offshore wind parks, so you have well uh, infrastructured um, harbors, for example, or heavy machinery that we can use. And um, yeah, that's just perfectly suited for us. And Fantastic. The last question, I'd like to head towards the Argo, yes, um, which is an incredibly exciting program you have going right now, and the vehicles associated with it. What led you guys to decide to, to try to do this for the European Space Agency? Because obviously this is a significantly bigger spacecraft than what RFA-1 can, can carry. Yeah. Just tell us more about the Argo, what its function is, and, and where do you see it going in the future? Yeah. So to give a little bit of background, um, ESA basically asked the European industry to come up with uh, proposals and solutions for cargo capabilities to the ISS. Um, the request is to uh, have a vehicle that can deliver four tons um, to the ISS and also bring cargo back down uh, and launch a first uh, prototype until 28, so 2028. And um, yeah, we, we sat down, we said, okay, like this is an ambitious project, but the European industry has to move forward. Obviously, us as RFA, we will not stop after RFA 1, so we, we plan to have evolutions of the, um, of the rocket. And um, yeah, also venture into other um, uh, markets, so to say, one of which is uh, like cargo. Right. And so, so Argo is designed to yeah, deliver over four tons to the ISS and commercial space stations and can also bring back uh, wow. to four tons. So it's a, re it's a reusable cargo exactly. spacecraft. Yeah. So kind of like the Cargo Dragon, and there aren't too many others like that aside right. from, from Argo. Yeah. So we, we partnered with uh, a couple of uh, companies, uh, just to mention two, which is Space Cargo Unlimited and Atmos Space Cargo. And together with this uh, partners, uh, we created a consortium, which is led by RFA. And um, yeah, Argo itself is quite innovative. Um, so uh, Atmos, for example, is contributing an uh, EID, an inflatable atmospheric decelerator, which basically is a balloon that um, yeah, opens around Argo and allows us to bring back like the full, full, uh, full four ton wow. uh, vehicle to then uh, reuse it for, for later flights and Space Cargo Unlimited. Uh, is responsible for all the internal um, structures, which are actually what we will sell, right? Like the, the cargo slots that can be booked by right, customers. Fantastic. Okay, this will be the last question. So oh, I, I lied before. Um, you have, a, I've interviewed uh, one of your main competitors on this program through ESA, and that's the exploration company. Yep. I guess it's a combined French uh, German uh, outfit. But how does, how does Argo compare? Where does Argo have an advantage over your competitor, not just them, but other competitors for this contract? Yep. Um, I would say, um, if I focus on Argo, um, the, not only the technology is very advanced and innovative, but the services that we offer, um, so four tons up, four tons down, is okay. like that's top level. And uh, also compared to the cost, so it's 150 million uh, to, to buy a full Argo, so to say. And that's highly competitive and I think very interesting for customers um, to yeah, consider uh, flying with us. So you can you can book a full cargo for 150 million right. on the Argo. Yeah. That's a very impressive price. Yeah. yeah, including the launch vehicle. Right. That's very good indeed. Yeah. Once again, appreciate your time today. Is there anything else you would like the viewers to know about Rocket Factory Augsburg? Yeah, so uh, we are about to launch a rocket in August uh, this year, and um, we are still looking for talent and motivated uh, people who want to contribute to it. So, especially in Saxaford, where we are now building our launch site, and uh, we'll soon have test campaigns run there. Um, we are looking for supply chain managers, um, for for technicians, um, also for project managers. So it's not only the technical side we are hiring on, but also commercial people. Everyone who is like willing uh, to to contribute to that, he does not need to have experience in the space uh, industry already. But we are also welcoming people from all other industries. Yeah, are ready to to launch a rocket into space this year. 
Fantastic. It's very exciting news, I'm sure, to lots of people here. So if you're interested in working for a bleeding edge launch provider here in the United Kingdom or in Europe in general, make sure to look up Rocket Factory Augsburg. Until next time, stay angry about space.